So after showing you how to create a secure virtual private cloud, what I'm going to demonstrate next is how could you set up your applications and deploy them instantly and go global with AWS's global infrastructure of managed virtual machines, which is a service also called as EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. What that means is it's a cloud of managed virtual machines, which offer you elasticity and you can create as many servers as you want, scale them up, scale, scale them down. Whenever you need more capacity, you can, you know, increase and launch more servers and so on and so forth. Now, how do you go about creating a server on AWS is what I'm going to demonstrate next to you. So here on this AWS console, you see that the VPC is already been set up. And when I deploy my servers, I want to do make sure that it is secure. And uh, to ensure that it is secured, uh, we deploy it inside virtual private cloud. So when we deploy the server, I'm going to demonstrate that it is deployed inside the VPC and the subnet that we have set up earlier. So here I go. So before I actually start deploying the server, I'm also going to add all my commonly used services to and pin them to this dashboard, the front page of that. So I can access it easily. So here I'm on the EC2 console. And if you observe, there are no resources currently available here. So from instances, I go and select create instance or launch instance. Now the first configuration that I have to select is which image because it's a virtual machine. And in case of AWS, the images are called as Amazon machine images or AMIs. So here is a catalog of all the images available officially. Uh, that is part of the quick start. Those are created by AWS. You can also go and look for the images from the partners which have hosted their services, their applications using AWS Marketplace. And you can also choose community AMIs if you want to, which are the images created by people like you and I and shared with everyone. You have to be a little careful with these images because you don't know what's inside those images. So to be safe, I'm going to pick an official image created by AWS from the quick start menu. From this quick start menu, I'm going to pick Ubuntu as the image. The next choice I have to make is what type of server, what capacity do I need? And based on that, I would select the instance type here. If you observe T2 micro is the instance type that I've chosen purely because this is just a demonstration and this belongs to the free tier or eligible for free tier. Basically what that means is you can launch a T2 micro instance, one instance and run it for a year for free if you have signed up and if you're eligible for free tier that is, but apart from that, you can pick other instances based on the capacity that you need. For example, there are CPU intensive instances, there are GPU intensive instances, there are memory optimized instances. So depending on the workloads that you want to run, you would pick the instance type. I'm going to stick to T2 micro and just go ahead and launch the instance or go ahead with the next configurations. Now this is where I would select that. Oh, I want to make sure that the instance is launched in a secure environment. So I would pick my VPC, uh, pick my subnet, uh, since this is a web instance, web server that should be accessible from outside, I've chosen the public subnet. And then from advanced details, you could also configure other things like, oh, after creating this Ubuntu server, what do you want to do? If you have a script to run, and that's exactly what I have here. This is a script to install the application that I want to deploy, which is WordPress. And I just paste it here as part of something called as user data. So after the instance is launched, the VM is created with Ubuntu as an operating system. It is going to run that script. Next is about storage. So from here, I can select the type of storage. It could be magnetic disk, like the hard drive that we had earlier versus the newer, faster drives, such as SSDs. Provide the tags to identify and filter your instances. This is always useful. And then I'm going to go ahead and 
configure the security. Security or the firewall for instance or the server is created using security group which we have already created. I've shown you creating a security group while setting up VPC. So I've chosen that default security group and I'm going to continue with that. Review my configurations and click on launch. When I click on launch, it also asks me for the key pair. Key pair is basically how I access this instance. It's a Linux instance, so I would SSH into it. So I would need a SSH key pair in order to provide an access. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new key pair. The moment I say download key pair, it gives me the private key basically. And AWS has the public key, which is go it is going to set up on the servers that I launch whenever I choose to. Using that key, I could access the server. And this is where you see the instance in the pending state now. So it is being launched. It is going to pull the image, create the virtual machine on this managed AWS cloud. By the way, AWS uses Zen server, an open source version of that as a hypervisor underneath the server's infrastructure that you see. And here you could also browse through the details about that instance, including which image was used, what is the configuration, what is IP address, what is the public host name and the IP addresses available. And instance state shows you whether it is running, whether it is in pending state, whether it is terminated and so on. And now that my instance is available, I can access it through web browser because it's a WordPress application. And there I go. My application is already available over the internet. In fact, I can just point a domain to it and start using it as well. However, I would just need one more configuration. That is, I need a database because it's a publishing platform called as WordPress, which relies on a MySQL database. So in the next video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the managed services that AWS offers and create a MySQL database and connect this WordPress application with the backend managed service.